honor, respect, and gratitude toward our veterans in Tewksbury and to all who have served and currently serve our country. Today we have over a dozen and current service members here today for our assembly. Please welcome our veteran guests.
Mr. David Libby, Manager of Finance and Operations Transportation. Mr. Richard Pelletier, Director of Student Services. Mr. John Lyons, Director of Extended Student and Community Educational Services. From our Tuskegee School Committee, it was Kristen Palomino, Chairperson, Mr. Dennis Francis, Vice Chairperson, and Ms. Jean Miller. I would now like to call on School Committee member and veteran, Mr. Dennis Francis, to share a few words. I saw in awe 
what the chairman was about. Two Marines with prosthetic legs running the 26.2 miles. One Marine holding the flag of our country, the other Marine holding the Marine Corps flag. People of all ages were saluting and cheering wildly. I stopped, shook their hands, and thanked them for their service. It was truly a moment I will never forget. But nothing can prepare you for the Blue Mile, mile 12 to 13. Along that one mile stretch, there were pictures on both sides of the course of Marines and other soldiers who died in Iraq and Afghanistan with their name, hometown, age, date of their death, with an American flag <coughs> over each picture. Picture after picture, flag after flag. The course was so quiet we could hear a pin drop. Further down on the Blue Mile, family members of the fallen veterans were there holding flags, cheering the runs along. Nothing can or ever will describe what it was like to run that one mile stretch of literally a moving cemetery of heroes. Finally, as you went to Arlington National Cemetery and run up that last quarter mile uphill to the Iwo Jima Memorial, you were left in awe with the cheering Marines on both sides of the course giving high fives and words of encouragement. After getting my medal, two or three Marines came up to me and said, great job, well done. I thought about that for a second and said, let me shake your hand for truly a job well done. The Marines are a different breed of soldier. They know no fear and all about their duty. They lay down their lives without a thought to save others. They've always done this and always will. That's why they are Marines. Remember, we are the land of the free because we are truly the home of the brave. Semper Fi, God bless our veterans, and God bless America. We would now like to recognize our staff veterans. Ms. Judy Coleman, recent retiree from the Tewksbury Public Schools, Petty Officer First Class, Naval Reserve, served for 20 years. Mr. Edward Cremins, recent retiree from Tewksbury Memorial High School, Staff Sergeant, served in the U.S. Air Force from 1971 through 1975 at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland. Specialty, Telecommunications Systems Control. Mr. Joseph Dermody, Sergeant, United States Air Force, Vietnam era veteran, served 1970 through 1974 as a munitions specialist and is currently filming the assembly. <laughs> Mr. Patrick Galligan, Sergeant, 82D Airborne Infantry Division, Fort Brad, North Carolina. pilot for the Coast Guard while stationed in Puerto Rico. And Mr. Dennis Wynn, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. TMHS Grad Army Sergeant Eric Welch. Good morning. Uh, it's great to see everybody here dressed in colors. Uh, I'm going to do an introduction of a guy that's pretty special to me um, as, a, as a graduate here at Tushbury High School. Before I do that, though, I do want to recognize one guy uh, who graduated just a year ago. Uh, he's fresh out of Marine Corps boot camp, where he's recognized by first class, and I'm going to ask him to stand right now through the efforts of our, all, of our good friend Mrs. E, who was able to get him here, Henry Robbins. Henry, can you stand up?
want to introduce you to a guy by the name of uh, Derek Welch. And I have the honor to introduce you to truly a, a, a local town hero. Derek is a 2006 graduate of TMHS. I have the privilege to coach Derek on the Redmond football and wrestling teams. He was a leader in our school and a strong member of our Tewksbury community. Derek fought hard for Tewksbury and then volunteered to fight for our country. He enlisted in the Army after high school and at the age of 18 became the youngest addition to the Army Rangers. As an Army Ranger, Derek served six different overseas deployments, fighting in the global war on terror, one in Iraq and five in Afghanistan. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. His military accomplishments include the Combat Infantryman's Badge, the Parachutist's Badge, the Ranger Tab, the Iraq Service Ribbon with one star, and the Afghanistan Service Ribbon with three stars. We are so proud of Derek's service to our country. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce you to TMHS's own Army Ranger veteran, Sergeant Derek Welk. That's another right I swore to protect, the right to say no. 
My objective today was to put a face on what a veteran is for you guys. And ultimately, I wanted to explain to you all exactly what you thank veterans for. Now with the small amount of time I have left, please permit me a small courtesy. The quote I've always enjoyed is a soldier doesn't fight because he hates what's in front of him. He fights because he loves what's behind him. There's a group of people out there who don't get a holiday, a parade, or anything like that. That's the people that get left behind. That's the families. The nature of the job I had was secrecy, meaning my family never got, never got to know exactly where I was and what I was doing. There's no way that can be easy. Now I want to thank Brian Elwood for giving me this chance to stand up here and talk to you guys. But I'd really appreciate it if everyone could give a round of applause to my mother, who in eight years never once asked me to stop, dealt with all the uncertainty that comes with having a son like me, and always made sure I had a home to fight for, and more importantly, made sure I had a home to come back to. Thank you very much, Trisha Welch.
Hunter uh, at the U.S. Marines, Midway Island, the turning point of the Pacific War. Uh, thank you, uh, faculty, students, administrators, 
and everyone here at Joe Fleury Memorial High School. Even though I'm from Wilmington, they allowed me to come here today. Uh, we're a 501c3 uh, organization of 52 volunteers, and we have five words that describe I call it through the directions. First two is community service, giving back to the community. The last three is long term care about the most severely injured service pending woman of the United States of America. So I talked to Brian, we are on this 5,000 letter campaign, that's why we're here. You guys have been involved before. And we're, we're on this letter campaign for injured servicemen and women. Nationally, we're on this awareness campaign for our Massachusetts injured servicemen and women. We just started with the VA in Bedford. We had a state house event three weeks ago. We had injured veterans who lost in VA Bedford. And in 2016, we're going to VA in Northampton and VA in Brockton. Unfortunately, the severity is of the injuries uh, it's astonishing to say the least. And we have a lot of work to do, a lot of fundraising to do. So I'm here to respect and honor the people to my right. Uh, I'm an Air Force veteran during the Vietnam era. We did not get appreciated when we came back. So we our mission for I Quads for Wounded Veterans is for these veterans to not be treated like we were. And I uh, really want to thank everybody that came to this event. It means a lot to me to see all these students and faculty, especially to our veterans to our, to our right. Uh, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Veterans Day is about respect, honor, and courage for our previous servicemen and women. If you see a veteran tomorrow with this gentleman feeling Right in front of me, he's filming, uh, filming, has a ball cap on him. Just tap him on the soldier and shake his hand or her hand and say, thank you for your service. That's all I want you to do. It will mean a lot to this veteran if you do that. So we have a huge book fair tomorrow at Barnes & Noble in Burlington from 9 to 5. And this is how we raise money for tablets and e-readers. We get a portion of the proceeds. If you're looking to do any community service, uh, please talk to me after this event and we'll record your hours and we'll record it and give back to Mr. Alwood. Uh, Mr. Alwood has the forms to write letters to our injured servicemen and women of uh, nationally in, uh, in of, uh, Massachusetts. We have not had a merit letter award winner from Tuxery High School. We've had three from Wilmington High School. So we're looking for Tuxfree to step it up. And I really, I mean it, step it up. So we want you to be part of this program or national program. Unfortunately, we didn't have any formal training. So we're national, now we did it backwards. We're national program, now we're coming home and starting in Massachusetts and New England. And finally, L. Scott, uh, Price, Major General, Adjutant General of the uh, State of Massachusetts, Mass National Guard, has uh, taken upon us in 2016 for this Awareness 2015 campaign to go to all the military installations in, uh, in New England and uh, raise uh, money for iPods and iTunes cards. And finally, uh, uh, we're going to have a, a, a national Christmas event that we're bringing to the VA in Bedford on Saturday, December 19th. It's called Christmas Festival for Veterans. If you'd like to volunteer and be a part of that, we greatly appreciate it. But just quickly, this is our logo. This is where all the electronics go in. But I have seen soldiers put down $600 worth of electronics and stop reading school letters before they even open the bag. We are making our 17th trip in four and a half years to Walter Reed in three and a half weeks. I don't know whether any organization in the United States of America has done that. We just came back from October. I've just been notified there's 110 to 145 brand new veterans that just come in in four different hospitals. So I'm just glad for Tuxery to be part of this. I am chairman, but I'd be remorse if I didn't say this. 
Chairman of the Board is our State Representative James Maselli. Can you give him a nice round of applause, please? Please feel free to talk to me. We have brochures over here. You can see the poster to my right behind me. That is our very first soldier. We came from Massachusetts in uh, 2010 on our first trip. It was 90 injured soldiers. The very first one we made was from Stone in Massachusetts. His right leg was amputated. But he's been rehabilitated. Now he works for the National Park Service. We still don't know his name, so we call him Mr. Massachusetts, so he's our poster child. <laughs> and honestly, in closing, respect, honor, and courage. But we met, must never forget about the fallen and miss it in action. Thank you very much. two of our junior students to the microphone to read their essays for the VFW speech competition entitled My Vision for America. Please welcome Akil Nagul and Jonathan Fowler.
Racism is something that just never seems to go away completely. Personally, if you are a good, corrective person, I don't care what race you are, but in other parts of the country, not everybody is brought up not to judge a person by the color of their skin. Massachusetts is a very productive state with educated people, so we are less likely to, be, to judge people based on how, however, in other parts of the country is different. I thought having a first African American president would help lessen the race gap, but it seems to have actually gotten worse. Recent people have gotten killed, riots, and protests have destroyed cities and towns. Now it seems that people are targeting police officers at range to prove a point. Obviously, we have a long way to go regarding the race issue. As a junior in high school, it's hard not to think about the cost of college. It's unbelievable to me that the average family can, can't seem to get financial aid for their children. People have graduated from college, hundreds of thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars in debt. My vision for America will be that every willing student to have the opportunity to further their education without the fear of bankrupting themselves or their parents. Every American child should go through school knowing that when it's time for college, they'll be able to go. The United States should want all the citizens to be well educated and truly members of society. I am very interested in law and government, and maybe someday I'll have the opportunity to make improvements on these issues. My ultimate vision is one of less violence toward each other and more opportunity for the citizens to go through this great country and live the American dream. The United States has been the pinnacle of change from the time it was founded to its influence in the global community today. From early democratic ideas straying away from the grasps of European monarchy to advancements in technology and education, America has been at the top of the progressive global ecosystem from the beginning. Immigrants come seeking refuge from oppressive and tyrannical governments or come in hopes of having a better life for themselves and for their children. People view the culture nation as a cradle of safety success, and equality. The majority of people flock to the United States to gain freedom and live a life unbound from religion, dictators, inequality, and discrimination. The future of the nation will be built by the people, working together, and learning from past mistakes. This will require people looking to the future rather than looking to the past. Some in America still seem to be going in the opposite direction. The political system has slowly become corrupt from corporate donors and Fortune 500 companies controlling the politicians like puppets. The method of making decisions for this country has changed from being an open-minded, representative government of the people to a government that looks more into the interests of wealthy companies and Wall Street bankers. Even though the United States was one of the first nations to have a public and representative government, the corruption and divisions of political parties has allowed other nations to surpass the United States in quality of life, happiness, and financial equality. With trillions of dollars in debt, the United States does not have a bright future, unless the people of the United States stand up and make decisions that better everyone, not just a select few. The fate of the well-being of the United States depends on this generation. The current time period is a transition period, from old thinking to new, from minimal technology to a world that will not function without cell phones, and from a work-based lifestyle to an easier laid-back life. Lately, many issues have risen that should have been solved during the writing of the Constitution, the topic of religion has been a great debate in the political world. This topic should not even influence the political faction. The founding of America was based on the absolute separation of church and state, meaning that religion should not dictate the government processes. Yet in today's world, many abide by religious beliefs when making important political decisions. Issues like these are hindering the pursuit of progress and pushing America back in the world. The United States needs a wake-up call to realign the path of the nation on a path of success. The United States needs innovation and progress from educated and progressive thinkers. The global community should envy the United States for its education standards, innovation rate, technology, social happiness, economic stability, and military power. The men and women of this nation who stand guard against outside foes are doing their job with tremendous success. However, the American people need to also step up and uphold their own responsibilities to the improvement of the nation. The government system should be cleansed of all corrupt and closed-minded politicians. The American society cannot continue on the same path. Recently, there has been a resurgence of racism, religious intolerance, social inequalities, and wealth inequalities. Other countries scoff at Americans and their century-old issues. 
that could have been solved by reason and education. This cannot continue. America is a melting pot of all cultures, ethnic backgrounds, and religion. The country is populated as a haven for those seeking refuge and better living conditions. If the basic principles and founding pillars cannot be upheld, then there is a difficult future for the United States. However, throughout history, when problems like these arose, people united and were fixed and better the state of the Union. Hopefully, this trend will continue, and the American people will resolve their social disparities. America is burdened with the responsibility of being the most diverse and model nation. Therefore, the image of the United States needs to be upheld in a positive manner. Others should look upon the United States as a nation of great people, great power, and great success. The journey is long. However, the people of the United States have been known to accomplish feats of great caliber. Thank you.
Memorial Hospital in three and a half weeks, and they put the challenge out to try to get up to about 5,000 letters. These letters mean more to these troops than many of the electronic devices that, that this group is gonna provide for them. So if you can take the time to do it, you can write multiple letters if you like. The stationery for those letters that has a TMHS signia on the, on the bottom uh, will be available in the library. And uh, there will also be a box when, you, when you've written that letter, you can throw it right in that box and we'll be able to provide Mr. Cardello and his group enough letters to, uh, uh, to get the job done as they, as they head down that way. So at this point, uh, I'd like to one last time uh, thank our veterans and then we're going to move on to our B-Block class. Thank you very much. <laughs>